Good morning. Hi there, it's Victoria Lorian Fabish, and welcome to Courageous Conversations. And today we're having a courageous conversation about anxiety. It's like one of the Goliaths of our time, something that's happening so prevalently among young people, among old people, among middle-aged people. You know, I'm just coping with a lot of that in the office. It's just, it just seems to be <clears throat> more and more pervasive. So I'm going to talk in detail about my holistic perspective uh, on anxiety because, you know, it's, it's, people go to the doc. I, I just, I got some stuff to say about it because I really feel as someone who's been doing this for 25 years, I am, I want to just gift you guys with a, a, a Facebook live. We might, we might do a couple of them on specifically what occurs with anxiety, some tips to cope with it, what's happening with the brain, you know, and all of that. But first, sharing is caring. If you know anyone who would be benefit from this, any group, any of your community, share this, share this. And that is what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to share this with uh, a number of my pages. Uh, Courageous Conversations is a page. Victoria Lorian Fabish, Courageous Conversations. Please like my pages. Join my group, Courageous Conversations. It's a place that you can... Uh, hi, Eduardo. Nice to see you. Thank you for everyone who's coming on. Um, it's a place in which there is a wonderful amount of um, uh, safety. It's a closed group, but it's safe. So join my group, Courageous Conversations. And let me just do a little bit of sharing um, to all my pages. And, and the thing about this is that my goodness, knowledge is power when it comes to anxiety. You know, uh, so many people do not have the actual, um, intel. They go to their doctor and then what occurs is drugs. And, uh, you know, I'm not opposed to antidepressants, but I have to say when it comes to the, to the benzodiazepine, the, the sort of the, the Ativans and that type of thing. I've just seen people get so addicted to it. It's just, and it's just, it's just a nightmare. It's just a total nightmare when it comes to, um, getting on those things. And then, you know, it, it, before you know it, what's normal is taking three of them, not just half of one as people say, Oh, I'm just taking half. I'm like, okay. But that stuff just, that shit just, just, you know, becomes really, really easy in your system. And so it's people, people need to be very careful, uh, with the benzodiazepine stuff because it's, it's, it's highly addictive and, and not, uh, not everyone knows. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Kathy. Nice to see everybody. I'm just doing a bit of a share fest, which I, it, I recommend anybody who's watching right now. If you know anyone who has anxiety, share this thing, because I'm going to share some very, very important stuff. Uh, so I'm just doing it on my group, Courageous Conversations which I'd love you to join. It's a closed group of safety and also on just groups that I, that I, that I participate in. And here we go. All right, let's start the program. Courageous conversations. All right. The number one thing that you should know about me is I'm not a doctor. I am a holistic psychotherapist. I'm a registered psychotherapist. And I really believe because I've been doing this for so long that it is possible to treat anxiety from a holistic perspective and from a holistic model versus, and hi, everyone who's joining me. I really appreciate you joining me. Um, and again, share this with anyone you think is, um, Hey, Wendy, I dreamt that I went out to Vancouver too. We must be dreaming, dreaming the same stuff. If you have a group, uh, that is interested in having me talk to me and we'll, we'll make it happen. Um, so I really do believe that the process of treating anxiety can happen at a holistic level, you know, and I want people to be proactive because once that anxiety becomes so habituated in your brain, um, it's, we have to do even deeper work. So the number one thing is what's happening with the brain. Well, listen, the number one, hi, Raisa, thank you so much, uh, for coming on The Number one thing that's happening. Number one, it could be a perfect storm. You know, not many people, uh, have anxiety and an anxiety way of looking at life, negative perspective, always with the what, what if this, what if that, you know, always seeing the possible, um, worry that we, the worry center of that person is highly developed. And, um, the, the person may have a genetic predisposition along with trauma as a child, 
this is what I'm talking about is that perfect storm. Genetic predisposition, trauma as a child, um, and then a, a habituated, many incidences of fear-based experiencing in which the brain is now conditioned toward releasing more cortisol, releasing more adrenaline, being more attuned to uh, the negative as a protective mechanism. And let's not forget that our brain just basically biologically, we are biologically predisposed to fear. Our worry, our, our, our limbic system is our survival center. And that part of our brain is what we are put on this planet with initially. It's this how to survive a war, a saber toothed tiger. And that is what we are biologically predisposed to. And the truth is, is that we are more biologically predisposed to assessing negative, assessing fear. And so when we are just letting that system be at its own natural way, and let's say the family of origin is also, you know, trauma filled, violent communication, or just even scary communication, or just even, you know, rejecting uh, ways of being, and I could go on with the descriptions of family issues, as you know, um, the brain will just go on with its normal sort of biological predisposition toward fear. And it takes like five times more positivity to overcome the negative uh, seeking brain that we have and the fear mongering brain that we have. Um, and that takes a ton of work. You know, let me just be clear. This is, I'm not Pollyanna, no rose colored glasses here. You got to do the work. And, and what people don't know what the work is, you know, people say, oh, it's just so effing painful. It's so difficult. I, you know, I'm just going to take a pill and it's going to feel better. But it's just, unfortunately, it, that the, the processing part of the brain does not actually change the way you're processing life. Hey, Dan, nice to see you. Hi, uh, uh, Ahmad. Hi, everybody who's joining me. All right. So we're looking at anxiety. So when we're looking at what it is to go in and process anxiety, people say, I need to cut it out. I need to go in the other direction. No, when you're actually working with anxiety, you need to do the counterintuitive thing of going toward the burning building. So you have to lean into the feeling and you need to squarely look at the monster in the eye and you need to go, what's this key question? What's this all about? What is this? thing I am feeling all about. You know, I'm afraid what people think of me. I'm afraid what will happen at that experience. I'm afraid. And then all of a sudden, all of your really good prefrontal cortex, logical aspect of your brain goes out the window and is muddied up with this profound, you know, uh, fear mongering from the limbic system. So one of the most important things is to have a support, a therapist, type of experience in which you are together looking at what the actual fear is. Because sometimes fear can be so overwhelming and so engulfing that there is just, I'm just afraid. I'm just fucking afraid of everything. But the truth is, is if you look deeply at what is there, uh, let's just say fear of what people will think or fear of the unknown or fear. And you go into you know, what is the worst that can happen? He said, well, people could judge me, whatever. You really start to troubleshoot it, looking at it deeply. So the technique is the more you look deeply at what you are afraid of. And again, you need to not take my word for it. You need to try this and you can do it even alone. The more you look at something that is scary, quite deeply looking at it, analyzing it, processing it, don't go away from it the more that thing will begin to dissipate. And so the, the technique is to like, especially with intrusive thinking, I mean, sometimes people's anxiety becomes intrusive thoughts. And then you do need to have, and I, again, do not believe the benzodiazepines, the, the Ativans, et cetera, is the way to deal with intrusive thinking. There's other, there's the antidepressant end of things, um, which I say, let, let the natural world help you first. And if that doesn't work, then you can take it up because we don't want you suffering so much. But the natural world has a bunch of great supplementation. L-theanine is an amino acid. L-theanine. L-theanine. Check it out. Sisu has a really good make. It's called Stress Rescue. And L-theanine comes from carob, comes from all... But it's a wonderful supplement that will help you just... It's a, it's a lozenge. I like that it's a lozenge. And you take it and it just calms the mind down a little bit. 
I mean, people are like, oh, natural, natural. Yes, natural, natural. It will not affect your liver. It will not affect all aspects of you so that you can, in fact, take back the control of your, of your mind that is really changing how life really is. It's like a distortion. So um, with the intrusive thoughts, bring a layering in of some uh, omega joys. Omega joy is a great um, fish oil, but it, omegas have been shown, high EPA omegas have been shown to really impact the brain in positive ways and help with intrusive thinking and to uplift your mood. Bring in the L-theanine and bring in some GABA. GABA is also really, really excellent. It's a wonderful supplement that will help, again, calm things down. But more importantly, we need to treat also your adrenals. I mean, as a holistic psychotherapist, I'm working with all of this, but I'm giving it all to you right now because I just want people to feel better. And so adrenals, uh, adrenal combinations, ashwagandha and um, ro uh, rhodiola are amazing for the liver to uh, the liver and also the adrenal glands to calm down that adrenaline that is constantly being like, that's scary and that's scary and that's scary and that's scary. So uh, these are supplements that, that, I, that I think that people should explore, do some due diligence, read about it, so that you can kind of give yourself a little combination. My first book, Find Yourself Culture, I have a bit of that program in there. And uh, there is, there's, there's some really, really good, there's some really good, really solid tips in there. Wendy says, we're, going on a, we're planning a road trip from Calgary to BC. However, I get anxiety as a passenger. So do I, by the way. I've told, I've told people about my anxiety as a passenger when we're driving in Portugal. Ah! Um, and it's something to really discipline because the driver can't handle all the craziness that the passenger is loading on them. So I'm looking for ways to stay calm and not to ruin the trip for everybody else. Those natural remedies sound like they should be included. Absolutely. I like Rescue Remedy also. It's a spray by the Bach Flowers. Uh, Bach Flower. Hi, Lena. Beautiful from Israel. Nice to see you. And I feel like there's a real opportunity when you are faced with something like a road trip or going on stage like I just did with, uh, um, with Speaker Slam. And that was really nerve-wracking. And uh, check out Speaker Slam. It's a really, really great experience, everybody. Um, and possibly something for you. So things that make you afraid are going to bring on that adrenal experience, that cortisol, which is your stress hormone. And it's going to ruin your experience, to be honest with you, because you're going to be with those thoughts. What if this? What if we crash? Or what if this person thinks this? Or what if that occurs? You know, the worst two words in the English language are what if? Um, you know, many people turn it around and say, well, what if something good happens or what if this happens? Well, often the brain is actually doing what if this bad thing happens and then the intrusive thoughts happen about what if my child, this will be harmed or what if this trip or what if we crash or what if, you know, this, this truck drives into me. These are the compromising, um, experiences of anxiety and the the limbic system going crazy like it's basically the limbic system due to family of origin genetics possibly and trauma as a child and then maybe trauma through your life or lots of scary situations or a predisposition the limbic system is basically flipped to the on position inappropriately you know we need the limbic system to to save us from a saber-toothed tiger. We need the limbic system to get us out of a situation that is a war. But generally speaking, we're not at war. You know, generally speaking, wartime thinking does not serve us in peacetime life, okay? But when the limbic system is just turned on, you are processing life as if there's a war going on. And so you've got to respond to things in a warring way. And... It just doesn't serve you. It just doesn't serve you. It ruins your life, essentially. But the counterintuitive concept is to lean in to the fear and look at it profoundly, squarely in the eye. I give the, I give the example of uh, David and Goliath story where you're confronting the monster and you're slaying the dragon, so to speak. That is in the office and just generally speaking, what I am recommending for people. Um, and if people have let it gone, go too far, they're going to take the medical model because, you know, the sufferance is too much. And I'm not here to judge that. And you do whatever gets you through the day, in my opinion. However, if you can be a little bit 
preventative, uh, you know, working with a few pieces, the mental emotional processing piece, which is to lean into it, the supplemental piece, which is to give your, your, to give your um, brain a break with some supplements like omegas. I love Omega Joy by Genuine Health. Uh, L-theanine by Sisu, which is a lozenge. Uh, Adrena Smart by Dr. Lorna Vanderhaeg, which is a combination for your uh, adrenals to calm the adrenal system down. Because when the adrenals are exhausted, we tend to have like a, a cascading of all other systems responding. And sleep is going to be very important. And so um, taking magnesium and and and, and, and speak to a naturopath for some of the quantities and read my book, uh, the first book. Uh, I've got some of the quantities in there. But also using some um, some ways to give your brain a break through the supplementation, which is what the medical model is trying to do with the benzodiazepines. But but there's some side effects and addiction aspect to it. Um, and doctors sometimes don't say, "Hey, do you have addiction in your family of origin or your lineage?" They don't ask that question. They just want to relieve the pain and give the patient the the drug right away. And I'm like. No, no, please ask the question. Please ask the question, doctors. Is there addiction in your family? Because it is a gateway, sadly. Uh, I've seen people, you know, end up taking three Ativans a day just to stay normal. I mean, come on. And then the process of getting off of it is so nightmarish. So really, really so important to not start with that if at all possible. The other thing, there's PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, where people have experienced bad things and then there's a, an anxiety response after that. And so a really good thing is make sure you're going to some therapy and tell your story over and over and over. There is science around telling your story, writing your story, slowly being listened to in your story that will lessen the brain's reactivity to that story. There's something about the brain hearing the story that will create a new relationship with that story, which brings me to neural pathways. Let's talk a little bit about neural pathways. My God, this is a huge topic, but our brain is not static. It's dynamic. In other words, every single thing you are doing, thinking and saying is impacting neural pathway connections in your brain. So if you've been habituated to be anxious about things, you have deep neural pathways, highways, in fact, associated with those thoughts and ways of thinking about things. So the brain can change, though. So why do I say meditate, lean into it, troubleshoot it, think differently about things? Is because we want to rewire the brain so it's not constantly wired for fear, we want to start to wire our brain for trust, faith, tr trust, faith, and relaxation in life. Uh, because we don't want to be wired for war. We want to be wired for peacetime. And that is a massive thing. Meditation, people, oh, meditation is so hard. No, just even s training your being to slowly breathe, you know, slowly breathe, in which there is... Um, the, the first line of defense in changing your nervous system from the fight flight response, which is the sympathetic nervous system to the relaxation response, which is the parasympathetic nervous system is to slow your breath and start to do, you know, in for four, hold for four, out for four, just that alone will change your biochemistry in terms of the biochemistry of stress will turn into the biochemistry of peace and release and relax. In my office, I combine talk therapy with body centered work because that is part of my training and skill set. And all of the body centered work is about turning the nervous system from sympathetic fight flight to relaxation response. So that when we're processing difficult topics that create cortisol and adrenaline, we're talking about them while relaxing, which is like the master way of rewiring the, the brain. And Dr. Norman Deutsch, who wrote The Brain That Changes Itself, talks about linking up relaxation with trauma topics 
and that that starts to rewire your brain when you're thinking about those topics. And it's so, 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 so effective. But in the absence of being able to get to a therapist's office, the most important thing is to bring in uh, processes to help calm that what if brain, that anxiety brain. And the supplements are important, but also the processing, uh, looking at life in different ways. Oh, and here's another tip, guys. Focus in on the details of things. So when you're in a freaked out mode, really, really fearful, uh, you know, oh my God, I'm going to the doctor's office and I'm going to get blood taken or, um, you know, going to get in the car or Wendy, you know, the one thing that you want to be doing, anybody who's in a process of, oh, that is so scary. I'm overwhelmed. The brain goes into big picture scenario of how bad stuff is going to be. All right. Well, instead of the big picture, a really good way to calm that brain down is to start to focus on details. So in the case of a doctor's office or a waiting room, look at all of the different lines, start to count lines, start to look at the detailing of things. Look at, if you have nothing to look at, look at your hand and start counting the lines of your hand. This will calm your brain down. Wendy, look at Wendy Hopkins. Who, uh, thanks, Wendy Waddell. I'll add that NAC uh, can be so useful for the liver and the brain. I talked about uh, L-theanine. Uh, for that. Um, but Wendy Hopkins, look at the car, look at the details of your trip. What's passing by? Oh, look at that field. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that cow. Um, oh, start to count how many signs there are. Detail. Detail is what's going to help your brain disengage from big picture fear mongering and just have you go, everything is okay in this moment, right here, right now. Everything is okay. And that will create new memories for your brain. I traveled in a car as a passenger and I was okay. New memory. That is as opposed to every time I go in a car, I destroy the trip because I'm so freaked out. A new memory. The trip was good because I did these techniques. And also, um, you got to discipline your brain. This is not going to happen without work, people. This is not going to, I said that, I say that because people think, well, you know, I just tried it once and, it, and, and it, no, it's not going to happen without work. You've got to really troubleshoot and work your brain that is now attuned for many years to the anxiety response. So the only way to undo that is to do this whole process of present moment detail thinking, taking the supplements, um, breathing slowly. Uh, leaning into the fear and really troubleshooting and asking, what is this all about? What's the bigger, what's the worst of it? I love the, the other questions. What's the worst of this? Well, the worst of this is that I will this and that will this and that will that. Mm -hmm. So this is, um, this is an important thing. Ah, yes. Uh, Wendy just sent me a whole study on uh, NAC and I love NAC. I take NAC every day. Uh, Nesetyl cysteine is another amino acid that really helps. And Wendy, maybe post that, what you just gave me. On this, on the comments, please, 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 and thank you. Um, could you do that? That'd be awesome. So there, these are important, important things to do because the truth of the matter is, is, is that life gets ruined with constant anxiety, and so um, you can, you can, you can reverse this, and don't just go and get, you know, an Ativan. If you need to get an antidepressant. Um, that's one thing and that'll help things, but that's not the end of the story and natural anti-depression, uh, supplementation are things like 5-HTP that you can only take if you don't go on any other, um, medical model antidepressant. And so 5-HTP is very, very good, uh, smaller quantities to start and eat it with food. Take the, uh, the, the, um, the 5-HTP with food cause you will, um, feel nauseous if you don't. So, uh, there, there it is. The 5-HTP for depression helps with anxiety as well, because sometimes depression, and anxiety are together. And also, Wendy, you're sending it to me right now. So put it on the, put it on the, uh, on the, uh, the group here. And 5-HTP, remember, can only be taken if you're not taking an antidepressant from the medical model. Okay an allopathic antidepressant. Um, but that combination of things is so powerful. That combination of things really works. That's the amazing thing about this. Um, the, it's the processing piece. 
It's the breath work piece. It's the supplement piece and the present moment focus piece. That combo is really, really important. And getting support, um, uh, getting, getting support. Don't do this alone. Don't do this alone. And uh, there is such a powerful transformation when someone who has experienced anxiety stops experiencing anxiety on any kind of a regular basis. Free yourself, free yourself. I hope this was helpful. Please share the video once it's uh, once I've got it up uh, for anyone who wants to hear about it. Um, the first book really taught, it's basically find yourself culture, moving from depression and anxiety to monumental self-acceptance. So I really talk about the holistic journey of coming out of anxiety and depression. And what I want you to do is to free yourself and take care of these processes within you as holistically as possible. Okay. I hope this was helpful. Um, I'm coming back for a very special uh, Courageous Conversation on Friday where I'm going to talk about aging, aging with my dear friend Lisa Betz-Lacroix who has a podcast called Superpower You. Join me then. And I'll have that up as well once it's once we're done. Join my group Courageous Conversations so you're not alone out there. And like my pages, Courageous Conversations and Victoria Laurie and Fabish Courageous Conversations. All right? Big hugs, big love. Oh, my heart is with you. Work on this stuff. It can work. It can work. All right. Be well, sweethearts. Talk soon. Bye. Ah.